Dr. Connors uh, being freed from his corruption. You have you have Doc Ock being freed from his corruption, the tentacles yep. freeing him. And even prior to being freed with the, the chip put in, he's even freed from the tentacles doing something terrible. When the, by yeah, spy, when the by, nanotech takes yeah, over. Yeah, nanotech takes over. And cool he, moment, by the way. You know? Yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a big Stark kind of power moment. When, yeah. And it shows... I watched the movie thinking... Uh, this is part two of our episode, by the way, on Spider-Man. Duh. It is New Year's Day... We are free from 2021. We are free from it. Other than our taxes. Did you ever get sad when 2020 and 2022 is just, it's it's when you think about it, it's like it's never going to go away. Yeah, it's it's Groundhog Day. It is. It's Groundhog Day. It's Groundhog Year. It is pretty awesome, though, because I do love Bill Murray. Yeah. And Harold Ramis, but that was the movie that divided them. Yep. They didn't talk yep. for years after that after movie. That. Sad. Sad. Harold Ramis, by the way, kids, is in the new Ghostbuster movie. The guy that's just a ghost, but who was originally a Ghostbuster. Yeah, another spoiler there. I no, this, I haven't seen it. Yet. Thank yeah, you. yeah, but it. But I mean, but it's my fault because it's, yeah, it's your weeks, fault. It's, so been it's weeks. my fault. It's your fault. I accept that. All right. So you we were talking about um, Doc Ock with the tentacles. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that was that was a very subtle jab, and there was a few throughout the course of the movie that really cement MCU status over yep. all these other projects, and I'm sure we'll see those when we see some X Men movies and things mm-hmm. like that. Um. I mean, you have Doc Ock coming after after Spider Man, and Spider Man very after a quick fight, very easily disposes of him. Yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, you you see the Avengers comment like the Avengers. Yeah, like the, oh, I've been to space been to, and I fought a purple alien. It's like we fought in space. Yeah, Man. just it's very. Better than us. Yeah, there's some there's some comments thrown in that I really enjoyed that. Definitely showed uh, how much bigger the MCU is. Anyways, okay, so back to the no, that was our geeking out moment. But no, yeah. but it, it's you have all of them freed from it, and that's what Christ does with you when you when you are brought to church on Sunday. It, it's not that you aren't sinful; you are. You're corrupted by it, but you're freed from it. That's not what defines you. Mm-hmm. It's like the text of the the ten lepers. We always call it the ten lepers. No, it's the ten men who are corrupted by leprosy. That's who they are. Yep. They're ten men who have leprosy. They're freed from the leprosy, but they're still these men yep. in Christ. That's who they are. And, and that's what defines you. And, and that's what you see in these when they finally do send them back. They send them back cured. They send them back freed from their corruption. And, and that's the thing is, it, it, you can take it to far. Oh, well, they're still sinful. Yes, we're always still sinful to the grave. But that doesn't mean that defines us. We're not conde- right. You're not condemned because you're sinful. You're forgiven. God the Father only sees the perfection of his creation in you. He doesn't see the corruption. And that's the beauty of it. Hmm. So, the movie is ending. And we see Peter Parker in his new life. Right. uh, Freshly healed from his wounds. Go to the coffee shop. uh, Meaning... Uh, to reignite uh, his relationship with MJ. MJ. Yeah, Ned doesn't really matter. He kind of shows up in it. Ned, yeah, but he wasn't Ned's going there. to the coffee yeah. shop to see Ned. He was going to yeah. see MJ. Something else to bring up about Ned uh, in a little bit. But that's I think a, he's that's... a hobgoblin, but that's just... Oh, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that. I so what that. color uh, did Hobgo- or did uh, Ned his wear jacket. the entire movie? Hobgoblin colors. Hobgoblin yeah, well, yeah, colors. Hobgoblin colors. Making making references that oh don't worry I won't I won't I'm your best friend I won't, I won't turn on you and try and kill you I won't be like what uh what Harry was to yeah yeah but you know what he's not his best friend anymore no I think in one or two movies we see Ned as Hobgoblin yep fresh off some MIT education yep um with maybe even a little bit of magic thrown in since we know he's, he's uh, got the magic he's got the tingling he's, he's got the tingle from that. Yeah, I love that was so good. I got this tingling in my fingers. You should probably see a doctor for that. Yeah, would so, you prescribe all the milligrams of which you're whining? So we see oh, so P- Peter Parker, Tom Holland, to keep them straight. Yep. Uh, go into a coffee shop to reignite his uh, relationship with MJ, um, and ultimately he uh, he decides that the best version of her. Mm-hmm. And this is how I interpret it. The best version of her and the best version of Ned, for that matter, 
is a life without him in it. Right, right. How are we to uh, to kind of take that? What do you think of that? I mean, I think there's two ways. One is pastoral, and then the other one is in our life as royal priests. Um, like I mentioned last week, you have that scene where Parker says that no one remember me. Forget about me so everything goes well. And how I related that in one of our episodes a couple of weeks ago with the Lord of the Rings one is a pastor is this guy. It's not about him. It's about the office. Spider-Man's remembered. Peter Parker is not. Mm -hmm. It's the same with pastors. It, it doesn't matter who you are, what rock star status you have, what your name is. What matters is the work that's done to free and cure men, women, children from sin. Right. That's what matters. It doesn't matter who's doing it, what his name is. Even though we're in an era of like rock star pastors, not just the Missouri Senate, knowing people, but everywhere. It's like you go yep. to a bookstore, all these pastors on the on, on the, the bookshelves. New you York know? Times bestseller list. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh well, I go to this church and this is the pastor's name. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Right. As long as he's your pastor. What's important about him is he does that work in that area. He's your friendly neighborhood, like you said, friendly neighborhood pastor type thing. But then secondarily is the reality of just how you live your vocation. What's best for your neighbor? Mm -hmm. That's that's in the end. It's not what's best for me. It's what's best for them. Yeah. And that's more than just a pastor. That's all of us. So right. everything you do in your vocation is what's best for my wife, my children, my friends, my family, church, my literal neighbors around me. So mm -hmm. that, that dives deep and you see it. You see kind of like the sadness. He goes into the apartment by himself. You know, which is the same apartment I think from Spider Man, from Spider -Man too. too. I think it is. I was hoping the dude would come out. Rent? Where's and my rent? It sounded like it him. did. So I'm like, oh, if you bring I, it back, I think it was. I think oh, it was the good, best. It was a good way to show that like some things are different. Not everything. Not everything. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the rent? I have this twenty dollars to get through the week. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That guy. That guy's awesome. They said that would be the Sinister Six. That'd be the sixth film. Be, Where's my rent? <laughs> that I would have been the best. I think that, you know, so going back to the Sinister Six thing, I think that's interesting because that was like the big conversation leading up to the movie was it that. like my daughter knocking on the door. It does. Go away, silly goose. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> yep. That's her. I'm going to just answer it because if I don't, she will keep knocking. Yeah. Five minutes later. I don't even remember what we were talking about. We were talking about Sinister Six. Sinister Six. So that was a big conversation going into the movie was that we're going to get the Sinister Six. Yeah. People were anticipating it being Michael Keaton's Vulture, which I anticipated it. That would have been Vulture. cool. Yeah. Um, he also made some comments that he was filming some Vulture stuff, and I think that yeah. was definitely a tip-off by Marvel. Can you say this for us? Yep. Yep. Um, but um, but I, I think the Sinister Six, I think, was relatively true to the original because I think the sixth member of the Sinister Six was Mysterio. Because mm -hmm. he was very present in the movie. Yeah. And not present at all. Right. Like the impact that Mysterio had in Especially Far the first From half Home, of the movie, yeah. Yeah, was felt the reverberations like going back to the cancel culture and the yep. reason for the, the story entirely. Yep. Um, I think he he definitely kind of fills that sixth role as right. the Sinister Six. Right. So where do you think we go from here? What do you think's next for our uh, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? I don't know, man. I'm talking about what, what, like, what's the MCU going to do with them? Think? I don't know. I think interesting Venom in there. Yep. That could be something. Not Tom Hardy, though. No. Which I'm, I'm, I'm happy yeah. for. I like Tom Hardy as Venom, but yeah. those movies are terrible. I wonder who they're going to have as Venom. Who this? knows? Yeah. Topher Grace. I love Topher. Bring back Spider-Man 3, Topher. Yep. Um, I saw one that could be they're gonna just do like his own Sinister Six. That'd be something. One they said he could do Deadpool. Yeah, that was another, Deadpool. Yeah, Spider Man Deadpool's a good relationship. Type thing. I can see that happening. That would be I, I, cool. I can see that. That'd be fun. But, but I mean, I honestly want to just. I, I know it sounds boring, but I kind of want to see what his Peter Parker life is mm -hmm. because that's what's been lost. So I want to see what's gained there. Like, what does that become? One of the the most interesting kind of conversations I saw surrounding. The, the spoilers of the movie and everything coming out is so in both of the original trilogy or the original trilogy and then the second amazing um, set you got to see life as Spider-Man the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man you saw his entire kind of story develop from the death of Ben all the way up yeah and with this Spider-Man you never saw the neighborhood stuff for the most part like one or two 
kind of side scenes. No. Um, and then the rest of it that you actually see is all surrounded by Stark. Yeah. And being Oh, yeah. The, like you're introduced yeah. to a, this new one in Civil War, right? Yeah. Captain America Civil War. And you No, know, exactly. In Civil War. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, his his story his origin is in Civil War. Yeah, it's all Avengers related. Yep. I mean, you see him, then you get Homecoming. We have Stark in that immensely. Yep. <laughs> so you have Stark in that immensely, and you you then go into from Homecoming, you go to Infinity War. Well, because like and Homecoming like is a, Homecoming is a Spider Man story. Yeah. But the all of it is surrounded by him being essentially the protege of Tony Stark. Yeah. Well, and even the beginning of it, you're talking about Far From Home or Homecoming? Homecoming. Homecoming. Yeah, and even the beginning of Homecoming starts with the Avengers. Yep. Right? Exactly, it doesn't start yeah. with, like, Spider-Man. It starts with Avengers, and it's so... And, um, I mean, and and Far From Home, he has the Iron Spider suit, and he has the stealth yeah. suit, and he has Those all glasses. these things. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is the first opportunity for, I think, Tom Holland's Spider-Man to actually be the true kind of neighborhood hero. Right. Obviously, like, the Avengers forgot who Peter Parker was. The Avengers did not forget who Spider-Man was. No. So Spider-Man was still the person swinging around right. on the planet, holding the gauntlet, etc. You know what I mean? Right. They just don't know but, who's under the suit. Exactly. And that's the thing. It's, um, they get a little glimpse of that at Homecoming. They do, like, the little scenes at the beginning where he's just in the neighborhood. Yep. Helping a stolen bike and stuff. Right. Like, why is he doing this? He's doing Avengers level stuff. Yep. But no, that stuff's still important too. That's where the world, the world exists where you are. I'm not saying that's some like weird hallmarky way, but the, the reality is it's, it matters what you do in your context, your mm -hmm. little part of the world. No, and I, I think that's, don't despair if you're not doing big momentous things. Exactly, and I think that's important to uh, to kind of remember, and that's something he also has to come to terms with, and that that's one of the burdens of the choice he makes is like. He's fought in space, and he's yeah. fought the big purple bad alien, and he's done all these things. Right. Whereas the his his peers, the other two Spider Man, have not. Right. They are the friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Yeah. So he almost has to. I think he has to change his mentality because there's an air of superiority. I think in the Tom Holland Spider Man, mm -hmm. in those scenes that as they fight. Yeah, he it kind of goes away from because yeah. he sees that they are Spider-Man pun superior, um, <laughs> in, in some in some instances because they've had these experiences and just yeah. because he's done all these crazy things and the Avengers and the Big Purple Alien and things like that doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. he's the better one. Well, and it's interesting. I thought of it too, and it's like everyone knows who he is. They knew who all the other Avengers were already. Yeah. Like, is there any adventure that has a secret identity besides Spider-Man? Uh, I mean, Black Panther, kind of. Black Panther, they know, well, I guess to a degree, because but they know that the king of who, what Wakanda is now. Yeah, at the end, so Wakanda. that's... A so they don't necessarily know that he's the Black Panther. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, like, you know Bruce Banner is the whole... Yeah, Hulk. you know Thor, you know Captain America, yeah. you know Falcon Winter Soldier, you know these guys. Exactly. They yeah. have identities... And with Peter Parker, it's like, why is he freaking out about it? But it's why they know him. They know exactly. Like, Who yeah. do they know you as? They know yep. you as this murderer. This the murderer. This yep. terrible person. Whereas the other ones, it's the momentous person. Mm -hmm. And even that, as the movie goes on, it's like, that doesn't really matter. So. Well, and I think it shows too, like, Tony Stark has killed people throughout the course of his movies, right? Yeah. Um, and in some instances, like if you go back to Age of Ultron, he's responsible for the dumping of an entire country, right? On on like, yeah, and you get that in like Sokovia is his fault, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's still remembered to be the savior of the planet. Well, even like in Hawkeye, you have he's going to the bathroom. It has that Thanos was right. Thanos was right. You yeah. still have this mentality of. Well, I remember when Endgame came out. I got in a massive debate with someone about Endgame and just worldview. They're like, oh, Thanos is right. The world is overpopulated. We're all going to die. And I remember getting in a debate about it. And he's like, you know, how are you going to stop world hunger if you don't get rid of people? I said, you know how you stop world hunger? World greed. World envy. Yep. It, it, you can have five people on this earth and still have four people starving. For sure. If that one person yep. is stronger than the others and doesn't want to share. Yep. I mean, it doesn't matter how many people there are. It's, it's do you actually love your neighbor or not? 
Yep. So it's a deeper issue. And that this was right before my son's swim meet. So I'm like arguing with people about this. And I said, it's not a... At the pool. Because what, what it is, is end, and this gets to end game, and that's maybe too much. It was Malthusianism, this view that if we have too many people, we have to curb the world population. Yep. And it's a surface thing. It's the reality is if man actually loves his neighbor, right. then... You're it all, it all gets to the back to the point that the original sin is the issue here. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I mean, and that goes back to, to Dr. Connors or to Doc Ock, like the reason they feel these things and they have these desires just goes back to, yeah, to the old Adam, the old Adam, Adam, the original corruption. Yeah. So, I mean, lots, lots in this movie, man. I mean, you have, you have the cancel culture, you have how you understand being a pastor, a priest, how you understand Jesus and his work of freeing yep. you from corruption. Um, One thing that we haven't touched on is, I mean, I am 12 years, uh, no, 13, going on 13 years removed from high school. So I certainly have not uh, existed in the same high school round yeah. that um, our hopeful audience does. Yeah. Uh, or the teens that we we uh, we have at conferences and retreats and that you know, take in the rest of our, our content, but the way that being in high school, I think is handled, mm -hmm. um, is very <laughs> interesting. And it, it reminds me of the nineties, 16 mm -hmm. candles or, or breakfast club kind of movies. And it's all almost a, a truer, um, adaptation of those movies for this generation than anything else I've seen. And it comes in a superhero movie, yeah, which is, is pretty crazy. Well, no, I think it does. It's, um, it shows the the stress level that's related to it. We we like to deal with stress as if you really don't have it because you don't know what I'm going through. Exactly. Like yeah. you, you're stressed over something yeah. going on. Oh, in high your school. life is terrible, but nothing mine is related worse. to mine. Yeah. And it's like the reality is, um, I've just been scarred up more. Yep. So something that may stress you out right now at a younger age doesn't stress me out because either I'm not experiencing it myself or I've been scarred up so much yep. it doesn't affect me as much. Does that mean then I disregard? No. What has scarred me up to the point where I'm at is right now opening your wound, yep. opening you up. You're actively bleeding whereas I got scar tissue. And, and, and that's the thing is what this movie does show is the, the seriousness of that. Like even take when they're opening up the letters to MIT. It's like, is it the end of the world if you don't get into a certain college? Well, no. yeah. I yeah. mean, it's well, not, but at the same time, yeah. yeah. It is, because this is who you desire to be. Yep. I remember when I was applying for colleges to go to Concordia. I mean, I was like, I want to get into this one Concordia, because that's going to, this is where I'm going. And if yep. it didn't happen, I mean, I grew up in Georgia. I could have gone to Georgia Tech or UGA or, yeah. or you know, yeah, exactly. Or the, uh, no, UGA, yeah. Or, you, or uh, Georgia Southern or... Um, all, all these different yep. places I could have gone to. Um, Kennesaw University was down the street. That's where like uh, three fourths of my my high school friends went to was Kennesaw University. But that's not who I wanted to be. That's right. not what. And yeah, not getting into a school would have really just yeah. Like who would I have become? That's the worst thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't say oh that's not a big deal. Yeah, it is because. It, it it's where you're walking, where you believe the Holy Spirit has paid for you to go right. already. And now that you're not just having to sidestep on the road, you're literally walking down a different path now. Than the one you have purposefully planned out yeah. for yourself. Yep. And it changes everything. Um, so what this can also teach is don't disregard someone else's stress, someone else's burden, someone mm -hmm. else's anxiety, just because it may be something that doesn't affect you as much right. anymore. It, it still weighs heavy on them. And I think one of the, the, the line I've probably... Quoted the most since uh, since I saw the movie, and I've I've said to Amanda multiple times now, and she's probably sick of hearing it. Uh, is expect disappointment and never be disappointed. But and that sounds like the most pessimistic thing. Um, but at the same time, like I think, and I know from first town account, like I remember feeling like that when I was that yeah. age. You yeah. know what I mean? I remember being oh, yeah. 16, 17. And expecting disappointment so that I would not be disappointed, especially yeah. with things like college admissions and mm -hmm. and the things that those characters are going through. Not even related to being superhero or superhero adjacent. Like ultimately, I think, and that's one of the the interesting things is 
the superhero story in this is a side story. Yeah. A side quest, if you want to use that terminology. And the main story is actually about Peter Parker for once. Yeah. Well, this one finally is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, you always deal with Uncle Ben dying and how does he process these things. And But this is actually, like, Peter Parker making the choice, like, obviously through superhero means, but making the choice for Peter Parker and for those around him. And it has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Right. It, it's, he could have he could have been outside of the suit for the entire movie, yeah, and the end result would have still been the same. Ultimately, yeah. I think I liked the um, expect to be disappointed, and then you won't be disappointed. I've said this a lot on the bondage of the will. Mm-hmm. Is your neighbor is bound in sin just like you are? Yep. So don't be surprised when they act sinful toward you. Don't let it, literally, don't let it affect you so much. Don't let it right. get you down. If someone does something, if you hear someone gossiping about you, be like, oh, they're sinful just like I am. If someone does something, someone's not caring about you as they should. This is yep. where we're at. Doesn't mean you should be this way, but don't, literally, don't let people get to you. Don't let, don't let everyone else determine you. Well, I mean, I think it also reminds us, of, reminds us of our old Adam too, is because where this person has sinned against me, more than likely, you have probably done that against someone else. Oh, yeah. Else. Yeah. I mean, it was just overall like an amazing. I like how you mentioned it's about Peter Parker because it really is. It's about that guy and his identity is more than just this. And yep. you see what he loses then at the end. It's not Spider Man losing something because they all still remember him. It's right. He loses a lot in this movie. And it'll be interesting to see where they go from yep, here. See with where it. we go. But I, I, like I said, I loved it. And, it, and here's the other thing about, about this too Freedom Christ. I just enjoyed going to it. It was an awesome movie. I mean, mm-hmm. I could have, I remember I had a friend one time that was like, for every one hour you spend with secular things, you need to spend 10 hours with the Lord. And it was a very, like, if I if I go see a movie, so Spider-Man's what, two and a half? Two and a half hours. with previews, and if you stay until the end, you're like there for over three hours. So you need to spend 30 hours this week with your nose in the Bible, or you hate God. And it's like, you know, you, you don't get what it means to have the Word of God, that it's mm-hmm. gift. It's for you. Yep. And that means you, you enjoy this time. I took all my family. My, my wife did not want to go. But the kids loved it. You know? And we went and had a great time. And I tell you. It was, it was a fantastic good movie. It was great. But the other thing was, and this is the one fun part, and it, it was neat because there were a lot of people in there with us too. So it also shows this is kind of, it relates to church too. Is like, let's say, if you're still kind of at home doing the online stuff. And it's not, it's fine, but... There is a difference between sitting in your living room by yourself, oh, yeah. watching church, and oh, actually yeah. being There's with everybody a receiving. One hundred percent difference watching Sean Chi <laughs> in the living room on the couch for yeah. the premiere versus watching this on opening night, surrounded by people, four hundred people that yeah. love it just as much as you do. Yeah, for sure. God made us to be community people. Yep. I mean, yep. in that reality. So even just outside of the movie, just the experience of this. I told Allison on the way back, I said, man, I'm just glad people, uh, like, I love movie. I was my first job in high school, mm-hmm. working in a movie theater. I was an usher. I loved it because it's more than just a big screen. Yep. It's the smells. It's the, the popcorn the popping. popcorn the soda. and the oh, soda yeah. and all that. It's the carpet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the lighting, it's the, the previews, it's the people, it, it's the lights, it, it's it's everything. And it's the same as with church, too. There's yeah. smells, there's people, there's the flooring, there's everything. It's, right. it, it, it Overall, everything preaches to you. So, it's fun times, man. That was a good episode. You, good episode of Part 2, fun. even though it was a little divided with uh, my dog. Yeah, there were then, some cuts, it's okay, though. And then if you're wondering okay. what that honking noise was... It, one of my sons discovered how to turn the car alarm off to car alarm on, on today. So it's been a delightful day, my little angels. Blessings from the Lord, as it says in Psalm 127. Five times. That is episode seven. We have a lot of exciting that was things. Seven, part two. Part two. So, so it's like seven and a half, eight. eight should we eight? should that be seven point five? Seven point five. Yeah, seven point five. Seven point five. That was episode seven point five yeah. of there and back again, Spider Man. Uh, no Way Home Part 2. We have a lot of exciting things from Higher Things coming in this uh, new year. Today, uh, Under the Cross, Episode 1 drops. We have been That's hard right. at work 
on this project uh, for over a year now. Uh, and we're very excited about it. We hope that you uh, check it out. It'll be dropping uh, weekly with quarterly topics. Uh, we will have weekly videos, articles. Uh, we'll be doing fireside chats. We'll be doing some of it live at conferences this summer in July uh, for the second go round of For You. Uh, we have VBS coming out soon. Awesome. Uh, just right around the corner. We have a lot of exciting things uh, at Higher Things coming out. Uh, if you're a youth, uh, make sure uh, that you follow us on social medias. If you're an adult, follow us on social medias too. Thank you for checking us out on YouTube uh, and our higherthings.org webpage. Uh, we'll see you next week. Let's find something fun to talk about. We're going to have always fun times to talk about. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully nothing, nothing sad happens. No, hopefully not. All right. We'll talk to you later. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Fun times, man.